Now, when trying to achieve something in life, there's one common mistake that most people make, and that's jumping straight into how to do. On data analytics, companies want to make use of their data because they hear that data is the new oil. So they find tools and figure ways to calculate and visualize their data. Oh, hey, you know what? I heard about this thing called Power BI. It's pretty cool and it's really up and coming. But what happens usually after a while is they get confused themselves what they were trying to do. Maybe they realize that things aren't as simple as throwing a bunch of data tables in the Power BI to get it magically appear as a dashboard. Or maybe when they present the dashboards to their teams or bosses, they get responses like, oh, cool, that's a lot of charts. Um, how exactly do we kind of use it to help us? Or, oh, good to know. And, and then followed by them never ever touching that dashboard ever again. So often what has been created doesn't address real needs or solve real problems. What actually went wrong? Well, it's because they start, they failed to start with why. Instead, they jumped straight into the what and the how. Now, what if companies started with why? Why do they want to make use of their data? Okay, let's assume because they want to increase profitability. Now, why is profitability important? Well, it's important because it measures how much value these companies are delivering to their customers and whether it's sustainable based on the resources that they use to deliver these goods and services. Sounds like a clearer why, right? Through clarifying your why, you also get clues to define your what, which then informs your how. And you'll realize that depending on the why, the what can be defined very differently and affects how you actually go about achieving it. You know, if you put data analytics beside cooking, they've actually got a very similar workflow. It's like this three-phase thing. So before you start cooking up a storm, you need to get your ingredients, you need to buy them, wash them, unpack them, chop them, you know, marinate them, debone them, scale them. Right? In, in data workflow, you also then have to look for your data sources, prepare them, clean them, and consolidate them. In phase two, in a cooking scene, in a cooking scene, you well, you'll mix all the ingredients together and apply some heat, be it through deep frying, stir frying, steaming, baking, barbecue, I don't know. Right? In the data world, you need to then model your data and you want to do some calculations. Finally, you don't go to someone with a saucepan of a dish, right? You have to then plate it. Uh, and present it attractively. Similarly, for our data workflow, you want to be able to tell data stories. So here's a quote by Nathan Yao, which I found reassuring, especially when dealing with FOMO, you know, uh, fear of missing out. Um, he says that traditional, often traditional, is the best route. Okay, they have been around for a long time because they actually work. I thought to highlight this because in Power BI, there are many custom visuals and more that's being added each day. So some are quite fancy, but not all of them are suitable for your needs. So never choose a visual just because it looks cool. Always start with what is it you want to convey? If you're really stuck, start with the traditional options, which are the built-in visuals. So to guide you in choosing your chart, this study by Cleveland and McGill can be useful. They looked at what is it that makes a chart accurately understood by people. You could use any of the following to encode quantitative information. Okay, so you have position, length, angle, direction, area, volume, intensity, and hue. And when you go from left to right, um, the visual cues decrease in accuracy. So let's get over to our polls. If you have to show and contrast the values 120 and 100, which visual cue will you choose? Okay. If you have to showcase the value 120 versus 100, which visual cue would most accurately display this? Okay, we have length and hue, some chose volume. Okay, 120, the number 120 and 100. If you want to juxtapose it, which one would most accurately display this? Now, all of them can display this, uh, but which one, would, which one would be perceived the most accurately? Okay, so I think we have a very clear winner here with more than three quarters. Well, now it's 80, 70% of the votes, it will be length. Now, position as well, it's starting to rise. Okay, so, if you look at it back to our charts, right? Position and length has the highest visual uh, per perception accuracy and then it decreases to hue. Okay. Okay, answer fast to get more points. How many number two can you find in this picture? And the timer is going right now. The timer is counting down. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And time's up.
Okay. And we have uh, 19 people getting it right. How many number twos did you find? Okay. There were seven of them in a photo just now. Okay. And let's see who's the fastest fingers first. And we have, and we have Dr. Evil. Yes. Do we have Dr. Evil? Dr. Evil is the fastest here with the right answer. Okay. Now, what if I showed you this slide, this next coming, this upcoming slide just now? What if I show you this? How much faster do you think you would have gotten the answer? And what's the risk of getting it wrong? Now, what about this slide? Or how about this? It's quite different, right? Okay, tell you what, let's try that quiz again, but with a different number this time, okay? 